Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel and welcome to another concealer review. I'm kind of sorry to bring you two concealer reviews back to back, but I know that a lot of you are waiting on reviews on the Natasha Denona concealer and I just got it in the mail a couple of hours ago and so of course we have to try it as soon as possible. Take a look right here at what the outside packaging of this one looks like. It's called the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer and I got mine in the shade P2, which I'm a little nervous about but we'll see how that works. I went for a P instead of the neutral because I do have some purpley hues underneath my eyes. I was debating between P2 and N2, which is a neutral two, and the P seemed to have a bit more color correcting properties to it, and so I figured if I'm going to use only one product, something with a bit of the color correction in it would probably be best for me, so we shall see. As you can see, I already did some of my makeup. I have my brows on. For primer today I used my Rare Beauty Blurring Primer. Just went ahead and smoothed that one all over my face. And then for foundation I picked up once again the Guerlain Terracotta Latin Foundation because I have been obsessing over it. I used only two pumps of this one with a sponge for my whole face. I feel like it looks so freaking natural. It blended out so easily and it pretty much covered all of my redness. I can still see like maybe a teeny tiny bit right here coming through, but like besides that, this looks so good and so natural on my skin. I am obsessed with it. And then of course I stopped there because it is time for concealer. Here's what the outside packaging of this Natasha Denona concealer looks like. It's a little bit different than most because usually you get the lettering on the thicker part of the concealer, but this time the lettering is on the thinner part of the component. So you can see it's thicker right here on the sides. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of this one on the back of my hand right there. It seems creamy, but not as creamy as the Tarte one I tried yesterday. It's a bit thinner than that one. And this one does have a bit of peachiness to it for sure that I can see. From the looks of it, it has a natural to glowy finish of it. It seems to sink right into the skin. So far so good. I think it looks great on the back of my hand. The problem is whether or not it'll look just as good right here where my dark circles are and where I have a few little lines underneath my eyes we shall see. But before I apply it, let me tell you all of the claims and properties of this one. This one retails for $30, which is more affordable than the Tarte one I tried yesterday, since when is Natasha Denona more affordable than Tarte? It is a hydrating concealer. It says on the Sephora website it's supposed to have a matte finish. Maybe once it dries down actually, but it looked glowy at first. It doesn't look as glowy as when I first applied it right now, but it also doesn't look matte. So far, to me, it has more of a natural finish to it. Medium coverage, long wearing, good for dark circles, of course. <laughs> it says it's a game-changing concealer that has a full performance formula and advanced skincare properties. And as highlighted ingredients, it only says botanical stem cell actives powered by a trio of actives. That was a bit vague, right? But I found a bit more information. The High Glam Correcting Concealer is made with biomimetic pigments and texture perfecting microspheres for flawless airbrush results with a weightless and natural look and a supremely flexible feel. On the little pictures on the Sephora website, it also says it's stock free and crease proof. This one comes in a whopping 56 shades. This has to have a shade for absolutely everyone. And it says the applicator and the way that the applicator is designed is meant to give you the perfect amount of product to put underneath your eyes. All right, so moment of truth. Let's go ahead and go for it. I'm going to add some right here to the inner corner and down a bit. This is what came out at first, but I feel like there's more product on the applicator that I could use. However, this looks like plenty to me. So I'm going to just go ahead and with the tip of my sponge, blend this out. The coverage seems really nice. I haven't dipped my brush back in, but I am going to add a bit more right here on the darkest area of my under eye. And the only thing I notice about this one, and this is totally my fault because I selected the shade myself, <laughs> is that I feel like it looks a bit too warm for my complexion. It looks a little bit yellow on me. However, I think that the coverage is amazing. It blended beautifully and the texture is to die for, so we'll see. Back with the sponge, just blending it out. You guys saw I didn't use a color corrector at all and the good thing about having a concealer that has a color corrector kind of 
embedded into it is that as you can see any purpley hues that I had underneath my eyes that were showing are completely gone. The under eye area looks really nice and bright. It has a beautiful natural finish to it and I don't feel the need at all to have used a color corrector underneath this one which is very rare for me. Usually I review concealers without a color corrector to see like the level of coverage they offer but I always end up wanting to add my color corrector underneath and that is not the case for this one. So pretty happy with it so far. Let me go ahead and apply it under my other eye. Now under this one I want to blend it out with a brush just to try it out. So this is my reference number 36 brush and I'm just tapping the product in place. And to get rid of any like demarcation lines you might have, which as you can see right here, I blended it nicely. But on my nose, you can definitely tell where the concealer stops. I'm going to use the back of my sponge that I applied my foundation with and just tap it over the edge. And take a look just by doing that at how beautifully that blended. So here's what the concealer looks like now that it is fully applied. I am going to do a bit right here in the center of my forehead. Center of the nose and chin just to make myself kind of even looking blending that out with my sponge um, and so far i am very impressed with the way that looks as far as creasing is concerned let's see i'm going to look up i haven't seen any creases but i also haven't looked up to like stretch out my skin folds <laughs> so let me look up there's definitely teeny tiny little creases where the concealer moved a bit but I feel like this concealer it's so creamy and it feels so hydrating that it just might take a bit of time to dry so instead of powdering it right away I'm going to work on the rest of my face and I'll probably powder it last and I'll probably only powder one of my under eyes so that we can see the difference because it did say that it was self-setting and crease proof so I want to test that out to the best of my abilities you know to contour my face I'm going to use the contour and stick from Westman Atelier I blended that out with my Sephora collection number 56 brush. I'm using my Naked Desire bronzer from Pat McGrath over top just to warm things up a little more. And I'm using a refer number five brush to blend the bronzer out. For blush, I'm going for Gucci in the shade Radiant Pink and another refer number five brush. Just patting it right here on the top of my cheekbones. On my lips, I'm going to use my Anastasia Muted Mauve Lip Liner. I'm blending it in a little bit. And in the center, my Clear YSL Candy Glaze for a little bit of moisture and shine. I spent a few minutes doing the rest of my face, so I feel like this concealer should be set. It has not moved since I showed you last. So as you can see, if I look straight at you, you really can't see any lines or anything like that. It has a natural finish to it. Remember, we have not powdered it yet. Um, and so the only way that you can see any creases is if I look straight up, you can see that it has settled just a little bit right between some little lines underneath my eyes. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to powder one of the sides. I'm going to powder this side right here after patting out those creases. And then I'm going to pat out the creases over on this side, but I'm not going to powder it to see if it creases again or if it stays without creasing. Like I said, the little tiny creases are not a big deal. You can not see them if I'm just like casually speaking to you, right? It's just if I like show you, show you that you can notice them. So far though, I really, really like this one. So let me do what I said I was gonna do. Let's go ahead and execute our plan. I have the tip of my sponge here and I'm just going to blend in any little creases that might be underneath this eye. And then I have my brush ready with my Givenchy Prisme Libre powder. This is a Wayne number three. I grabbed a bit more powder than I intended. All right, so with my Givenchy powder, I just went ahead and set this under eye. And I'm also going to set the center of the forehead just because I want to be matte right here in the center. As you can see, once we added the powder, this side right here looks super, super smooth. And of course, any creases are gone. It looks really, really flawless underneath this eye. I'm going to stick to my guns over here and resist the urge to set it, right? So what I'm going to do is with the brush, I'm going to tap any little creases that I might have on this side out. And now that the concealer is set, maybe it won't crease again. So I'm just tapping them out down here and see any creases that I had 
right there are gone now. It's 12.43 right now, I have my concealer set and not set, and I'm of course going to wear this makeup throughout the day today to see how the concealer moves or it doesn't move underneath the eyes. So far, I'm very happy with it. It has impressed me for a creamy concealer, because usually I like more liquidy concealers, but this one just blends out very thinly, I guess. Um, and so far, it looks really good. So I'm definitely very excited about it, and I'll check in with you guys later. Okay, so I'm outside. It's very windy today, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay, but this is my daylight check-in. It's almost three o'clock in the afternoon, which means I've had this for over two hours, two and a half hours now. And here is how it's looking. Here's my non-set side. And as you can see, this one definitely needs some setting <laughs> because it definitely creased back up. Take a look right here, right? And also I feel like the eye that I didn't set looks a little bit darker. I think it might've worn off just a tad bit underneath this eye. So in that sense, I would powder it all the way. Here's how the powdered side looks. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Things look nice and smooth underneath the eye. It hasn't really creased, except right here, maybe in the deepest area. But that doesn't really bother me because usually I put eyeshadow there, right? So, um, powder all the way. And with powder on and this concealer having a color corrector kind of built in, I'm honestly very happy with it. Also, something I forgot to mention again, was the color match i complained earlier that the color match was maybe a bit too warm but but as you can see once i finished up my makeup once i set things with powder once i did a bit of bronzer and blush and all of that i do actually like the color match so p2 was the right shade for me i think because i truly don't think it looks hold on hold on because I truly don't see my concealer looking too warm on my skin right now. So, so far, I really like it so far. I am impressed. If I had to rate it right now, I would probably give it like a 9.8. <laughs> um, but I will see you guys later to see how it continues to wear throughout the day. So far, powdered is 100% the way to go. It is 5.20 now and I am back for the last check-in. As you can see, with these lights at a regular distance, I feel like both under eyes look pretty good. I showed you up close earlier, and this one that I did not set with powder has creased a little bit, which you can't really see unless like I pull down my eye or I look up, but it does have some creases in it. So I would 100% recommend that you set it with a bit of translucent powder, because as you can see, my translucent powdered side looks a lot smoother, there's no shininess coming through the way I have shininess coming through right here, and it barely, barely creased. There's like one, one little line right there where it moved a little bit, but unless I put my eyes down a lot, you really can't see it at all. And if I'm just talking to the camera or anyone the way, the way I am right now, you really cannot tell at all. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of a 9.8 out of 10, I feel like with the translucent powder, I could go ahead and give it a 10. This one is really nice. Even though it's a creamier formula, it blends out beautifully. It wears beautifully throughout the day, as you can see. I will, of course, mention this concealer again in an update video and tell you after I've worn it a whole bunch of times how I feel about it. First impressions from today, I think it's a 10 out of 10. I really do love it, but I would always set it with some translucent powder because I do like this side a lot better than the other. So let me know what you thought about this one down in the comment section. I honestly didn't expect to like it the way that I ended up liking it. I felt like it was going to be a bit too thick, a bit too heavy for me. I thought it was going to crease more than it did. I thought it was going to maybe show my texture a bit more. So it was a pleasant surprise for me to see how thinly and beautifully this one blended out. Lastly, I'm also very happy with my color selection. I didn't need to put a color corrector underneath and my eyes have looked really nice and covered and bright all throughout the day. So 
once again, 10 out of 10. I'm very, very surprised and very happy that I love it this much. So if you're interested, I highly recommend it. Please, if you end up buying it, use the link I'm leaving you down below in the description box. Whenever you shop for my links, you are helping out my channel. And if you like today's video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.